I think it's fairly common knowledge that Pentium 2 desktops generally just work, so does the same apply to laptops. This is a Compaq Armada 3500. Well hello everyone, I'm High Treason as you probably very well know, and as I said it's a Compaq Armada 3500, we actually have two of them, and uh, if you remember before I said uh, about it in the previous video about the ZFX86, uh, we actually got sent the wrong thing kind of, but I'm not complaining, I guess we'll get into that as we go along. This is a laptop I actually have a history with, uh, you know, this, this isn't my first outing with one of these, I did own one years ago, I probably have mentioned it somewhere before, and well, yeah, I always wanted an excuse to get another one, I've got an excuse, and uh, yeah, let's play around with it, have a look at uh, what it does, I suppose. Uh, let's get on with it. Let's be honest, this thing is kind of beat up, isn't it? But it cost $10, was sold as broken, turned up fully working, and has a faster CPU than was advertised, so if you think a bit of missing pen is going to bother me, then you have unrealistic expectations. That said, I did expect it to work, because usually when I buy broken things that look a little bit battered, they work properly. Meanwhile, things that look shiny and promise to work usually end up breaking down. If you follow me around outside of YouTube, you'll probably have noticed I quite often say, always buy broken, because it's what seems to work almost invariably. Still, on its own, the laptop looks a bit lacking, doesn't it? There's no floppy, there's no CD-ROM, not really that much of anything, but you do have a selection of ports at the back. For a start, there's a shared PS2 port for external keyboards and mice. It does work with a Y cable if you want to use both at the same time. There's infrared then parallel, serial, expansion, that is for the convenience bay I don't have, VGA, and audio. Seems quite sensible to put that at the back rather than at the side where you're going to constantly knock into it with your hands and your legs. Also notice how most of the ports are recessed, just like they were on older laptops. This was so they didn't get mangled against things and caked up with darts. This worked, which only makes it more baffling as to why modern laptops put them in stupid places and have them stick out of the side a bit like this. Oh yeah, there's no standoffs for the port on here either, and, uh, well, it, it doesn't work. Plus the fact this is a 2011 laptop and it doesn't have HDMI on it makes total sense for a, a business-oriented machine. Needless to say, the equivalent port on the Armada works fine despite being considerably older. On the left side there are cooling vents. Now this makes sense because the laptop will sit on a desk, or the dock, or your lap. I mean it's in the name, it's a laptop. So this position prevents them from being blocked up. Of course, this was quite normal at the time, but on today's laptops they will insist on putting this kind of thing on the underside so your expensive computer overheats and breaks down. An issue that was only exacerbated as laptops eventually began to feature fairly powerful GPUs which dissipated a lot of heat as well as the processor. Otherwise there is a single USB 1.1 port, a interface for external floppy drive and a volume control button thingy. Yeah, having these up and down buttons instead of a, a knob was quite common when this laptop was made, and even some desktop CD-ROM drives did it. I'm fairly certain Philips made some like that, but they weren't the most reliable drives in the world. The volume bit worked fine, the laser assembly on the other hand seemed to go weak fairly fast in most of the ones that I saw. I'm sure they were Philips drives, but I, I can't imagine they were the only ones to do it. This hole is for the battery, I do have that but I'm still a bit weary of testing it. Then again, it says it's Japanese, so it might work. Also, I do like this charge indicator. It was a more common feature at the time, and while some laptops do still appear to have this, it's far rarer of a feature than it really ought to be, because I quite like it. Then again, going back farther, remember when you could charge batteries outside of the laptop, and it, yeah... Come to think of it, are batteries on laptops today even removable? I'm, probably not. They probably use uh, explosion in a takeaway tin lipo cells that are just going to stop holding charge after six months, 
swell up, make the thing go a weird shape, and then explode. To the right there is one speaker. Two slots for PC, card bus, PC, MCIA, whichever it is. I always forget which is which. And a socket for a charger. Oh yeah, did I mention that one of these laptops, I have two of them, came with uh, Ethernet and modem cards? Both of which work. Always by broken, you get like free burner stuff with it. It's awesome. I always did like how the screen cover was metal on these. I mean, it's not super strong. I wouldn't say go hitting it with hammers. That would certainly do it in. But I mean, this one's clearly been dropped and it's still working fine. So it does its job. Now, lifting the screen up presents us with just what we'd expect. As these are imports, they have the correct keyboard layout. They also have a fairly small AccuPoint. Actually, I think it's called an Easy Point 4 on these. The buttons for which make sense, because they're shaped like where your thumb will find them naturally and easily. Remember when I said this laptop was a stink pad killer to me? Well, this is why. Back when I used to earn one of these before, that feature was one of the driving factors in my decision. I've never understood how people can use those weird buttons that IBM likes to have for their pointing devices. Once you get past that, it is going to be fairly tit-for-tat as far as features go, though. With this Armada 3500 and the ThinkPad 600 being considered largely equivalent. They both use the same CPUs, they both have a 12 inch screen, both had a focus on being more portable, and both had extremely similar specifications. Where they differ it's usually a back and forth kind of thing, such as how my laptop has only one speaker, where the ThinkPad has two, but my Armada's ESS audio chip is a little bit better than the crystal that the ThinkPad uses. The ThinkPad has a bay in the front where you can install a removable drive without needing a dock, but my Armada tended to come with a hard drive that was at least a gigabyte larger, so you wouldn't really need to use those as often as you could just store the data on the hard drive. To be honest, a lot of it's going to boil down to how you intended to use the machine as to which one's the better tool for any given job. All that said, though, one very important feature of a laptop is being able to use it, and I do generally prefer the way things are laid out on this one, versus the ThinkPads of the time. Also, I hate to repeat myself, but I do have fairly large hands, albeit proportional to the rest of me. <laughs> yeah, you, you read that whichever way you want to. Uh, I, I didn't put that thought in your head, that was you. But in any case, my hand span renders the ThinkPad-style pointing device now unusable. For the record, I can't use Xbox S controllers either. My large thumbs just mangle all the buttons, and it's, they're essentially painful to use the analog stick on them, because it's in the wrong place. I do, however, hold N64 pads by the outer prongs, which gains me a bit of an unfair advantage in things like Duke 64's multiplayer modes, because I don't have to move my hand over to use the inventory. It does annoy me how so many games use Z in place of L, though, but I guess that would make sense, as most people seem to wrap their hand around the middle prong. My hand won't even fit round there, so yeah, you know, good luck with that. It may seem odd at first to realise that this uh, has two power buttons, but only the sliding one can turn the system off again. The push button's more of a suspend button, really. Yeah, talk about foolproof. I mean, you kind of initially think, well, this might be a bit needless, but then I don't know, because I do occasionally find myself knocking mouse buttons and keyboard buttons by accident, and maybe I'm just a clumsy oaf, but it might be a feature that I totally need and don't realise that I need. I'm not going to complain about it, it's not exactly making the experience worse. Those little buttons over to the left are assignable. It's a feature that persisted onto some Elite Book laptops, which I've always felt this thing was probably the ancestor of. Obviously this thing came with Windows NT or Windows 95, but the one I had years ago had a label mentioning Windows 98, I'm fairly certain. So this probably depends on when the unit was built. It's fairly easy to get to the internal organs, because all you have to do is slide back these tabs on the top of the keyboard and lift it up. It's another feature that persisted onto the EliteBook 8540W, but annoyingly it's absent from this later 8760W, which is particularly annoying because the keyboards on these are very unreliable. They break all the time. I mean, on the 8540, the little spring metal stiffness thing under the spacebar had holes cut into the membrane to let the little metal pieces move through without cutting the membrane up. On this model, they seem to have forgotten about that, 
and now trash is running underneath that it cuts through over time and makes the keyboard stop working. This isn't a problem on the Armada 3500, so this is evidently something they'd figured out years ago, but I guess new design teams must know better. Still, inside the 3500 you can't really see all that much, but well under there is our mobile Pentium 2 module. It runs at 333MHz. I'd order the 300MHz system, but I'm not about to complain about this. I'm not actually sure where it tops out. I, I would imagine any 66MHz one would work. The board also has 32 megs of SD RAM soldered to it under the black plastic there. Both this and the CPU are on a 66 MHz GTL Plus bus, just like a Celeron desktop, and to be honest, I, I would wager they perform quite similarly to a salary system. Most of the interesting things are on the underside of the motherboard, and luckily I have the original motherboard from the 3500 I owned years ago, as I did replace it. So, well, we can at least see that one, I won't have to take this out. I suppose the Texas Instruments PC card controller draws your eyes pretty fast. Otherwise, I'm inclined to think the CNT video chip is under here. It's a 69,000. I'd prefer not to lift that tin off, because for a start, my soldering iron doesn't get hot enough for such jobs, and I'm not sure I'd be able to get it back on again where it would interface with the top of the chip properly. It is just a plastic ball grid chip. It's not really anything special to look at. And quite honestly, its feature set is much the same story. It's, it's a rudimentary 2D chip with a, an LCD controller built in. It is pretty decent at what it does, in all fairness. It's, uh, it, for some reason, I remember these having ATI Rage 2s in, but apparently they don't. I, I'm not really particularly bothered. I mean, this thing seems to work, so it, it's doing its job. And next to that is a floppy controller. Then we have a PII X4 Southbridge, or PCI IDE ISA Accelerator, as Intel occasionally called it. It's the same chip that they use on desktop motherboards for some late Socket 7 and uh, a lot of Slot 1 motherboards. And I think, was it SGI who used this in one of their systems as well? I don't remember. I know one of them did for uh, getting ISA or something in, into their workstations. Well, then we have the ESS ES1869. It's in a smaller package than you'd see on a desktop motherboard or ISA sound card. It seems to function the same. It uses the same drivers. I guess it might be lower power because of a die shrink, or it might have some power-saving features that it does in hardware. Not really sure. It has an S suffix instead of the F that you usually find on the desktop version if you want to look it up, but... I really can't imagine there's much functional difference going on. Hey, wait a minute, where the hell is the north bridge on this thing? Well, that's part of the MMC1 module the CPU is located on, being an Intel 440DX. It's no wonder it works, then, as this suggests it belongs to the same family as the desktop 440BX, a chipset that was very well known and very well loved for the fact that it almost never seems to break, and yeah, I can't remember ever having a bad experience with one of those. So, yeah, I'm not going to really have any issue with this. It is kind of horrible that you don't have a choice, though. You just get this one chipset and that's it. You don't get to use another one. Any device using these CPUs has to use the 440DX, and that's it. I suppose if you're going to have an anti-competitive monopoly, though, well, you might as well be stuck with a, a 440 chipset, because it is one of the best. And now, no doubt, you have spotted that large connector, and it's for this accessory. This is a dock, which adds two speakers, a mains power supply, plus bays for optical drives, floppy drives, or, I'm told, a 6GB hard drive, LS120 or ZIP. I think most people use these docks with these systems as I've never once seen an Armada 3500 with its power brick, suggesting people just charge them from this dock back then. Neither of the two laptops I have here possess the DVD drive, though as they are just plain IDE laptop drives we could totally add it ourselves if we wanted to, and the CD drives will do for now. It was an option, my old one came with a DVD drive. Now, as for the floppy, you can slide that out with this button thing quite easily, though, as we said, you might have wanted to do that. It, it's called a multi-bay. You can plug all those things in that we mentioned before. Regardless of any of this, most of that dock is pretty passive outside of that power supply. 
I did kind of like how a few older laptops had ways of plugging themselves right into the mains. You, it's not something you really see anymore, and it's pretty annoying. I mean, you know, this solved the problem. If you're going to move this thing with the dock, then you didn't need to move it with the brick. You can take the dock off again with this lever, by the way. It's a pretty simple mechanism, and here's the thing. If you're thinking the thing's a bit bar burns without it, then... Well, remember, one of the main focuses of the design of this model and the equivalent stink pad was making it more portable, and... Well, being able to take it off the dock was pretty good. If you had a presentation to do really quick or something, makes a laptop lighter, using less power. You, you don't really need these features here to do that kind of thing, so... Yeah, I kind of like it, actually. It works for me. Oh, and uh, briefly, worth of note, the uh, optical drive runs on the same IDE channel as the hard drive. I'm not actually sure about devices in the multi-bay, like what those would do. Anyway, before we forget about it, the hard drive is in the underside of the laptop unit. That is the laptop itself, not the dock. The uh, hard drive compartment would basically be sat right on top of that. By default, the hard drives in these would usually be 4 or 6 gigabytes. I think Toshiba made them, from what I recall. They replaced mine with a 20 gigabyte Fujitsu because I have a stack of those completely unused. May as well use them. Amusingly, uh, this one came with a ThinkPad's old hard drive, so that, that was a bit of a laugh. It did work! It had a fully functioning Windows 98 installed on it. In that same compartment, there is a CMOS battery and the Hibernate battery. Oh, they would be there if I hadn't removed them, as they were leaky and dead. Probably pretty easy to just cobble new ones together, they, there's nothing special going on there with them. Moving over, there's a compartment for laptop SD RAM next to this. I have a 64 meg stick installed in there, which takes us up to 96 megs total. You can go considerably farther than this, far enough to make Windows 98 horribly unstable at any rate, so I don't really think the limits are worth worrying about. I think officially it's 192 meg, but you may be able to go a bit farther, I, I'm not quite sure. Like I say, I, I don't really care, because usually as you start going past that, Windows 9X is going to start getting quite unstable, unless you want to mess with it extensively. Unless you're very lucky. Well, anyway, I, I think that's enough of that anyway, so let, let's fire this thing up. You know, that screen isn't bad, and scaling by the CNT chip is actually quite good too. We can actually set two modes for the LCD, either to have it save more power or be more responsive. It is a TFT screen, so aside from the signs of rot from spending 23 years on this rather corrosive planet, it should be pretty good. Worthy of note, however, is that this setup isn't in the ROM, and it runs from either a floppy or a partition on the hard disk. Be aware of that if you're going to change a hard drive in one of these, or wipe all the partitions off, because, well, if you do that, you're not going to have this setup, and you'll have to get floppy disks to work. Which is always fun, because floppy disks don't work. At least micro floppies. Especially European ones. Yeah, I... We've discussed this several times, uh, you know, I've talked to people about it, and... We sort of came to the conclusion that that was the issue, because I found floppy disks made in the US to be more reliable. And what's interesting there is that the magnetic disk itself is a slightly different colour to the European and Chinese ones. It's slightly more blue, whereas the ones over here tend to go a little bit more brown as they age. I, there's obviously something different in the formulation. I, wasn't there some German factory that messed up the formula for CDRs once? It's probably something like that. Windows 98 doesn't actually boot all that fast on here. It can. In fact, it booted very fast, but installing Compact Power Management slows it down dramatically. I guess if this bothers you, you could just not install that. The laptop will work fine without it. But I would like to get this thing back on batteries someday. The OS performs fine once it's started up. It doesn't make any difference there, so... I'm not really that worried about it. It's not like I'm in too much of a rush to get into Windows 98. That's that's go and have a cigarette time. It's, I'm not really concerned. Huh. Yeah, well, I sure miss when you could do that. You remember when laptop speakers actually were quite loud and didn't sound shit? These actually have bass on them. <laughs> Oh, 
oh yeah, this sounds really shit. But no, I mean, with that, then I guess it's hardly a surprise that this Elite book doesn't really sound very good, but it's pretty average for a modern laptop. You can't use that it's business oriented as an excuse, because, I mean, well, the Armada's kind of a business laptop, so <laughs> that actually has best, so... Yeah, that's no excuse. <laughs> Yeah, heck, even some odd music with mushy audio engineering sounds somewhat passable coming out of these speakers. I mean, this is totally what you need on a laptop like this. Just decent speaker system. I swear that round hole acts as a bass port. I, I've never been entirely sure if that's intentional, but if you put your hand there when you're playing music, you can feel the vibrations from the sound there, and it just seems to make it louder somehow. <laughs> I'm not going to complain about this, it's wonderfully obnoxious. From here on it goes without saying that you can do most of the things you can do on a desktop system and the Pentium 2 processor is pretty snappy. In fact I might move my book writing over here even though I'm nearly finished with it, because Word 97 is far more responsive with an over 300 page novel on this thing than it is on the Pentium 90 in my Satellite Pro. Now this is not making any slight at all at the age of Toshiba, because the CPU in here should be over three times faster. I'd be pretty disappointed if it wasn't outrunning it, because, well, it would be quite an inefficient piece of crap if it was doing 333 MHz and getting trampled by a 90 MHz thing from a few years prior. I suppose we'll measure this shortly. Undoubtedly, this thing is going to walk build games at any rate. We're running Duke Nukem 3D at 800 by 600 which is the native resolution of the LCD, and the laptop just doesn't car. It'll do this all day. And to be honest, you can push it quite far with things, so long as you don't want 3D acceleration, because we don't really have any of that, and such features didn't really start becoming more commonplace until the next generation of laptops. My Presario 2100 certainly had a, a Radeon mobility in it, and yeah, that thing was actually pretty kick-ass. I liked that laptop, it was really good. Now, I asked for speedsys results from an equivalent stink pad, and nobody managed to get hold of any for me. And I thought those were meant to be the best, and really popular and stuff. I guess not. I guess it's like when I say I think a game isn't very well made or something, and everyone, oh, you, you don't know what you're on about, and then I stream the game and get to, like, the third level, and people are, oh, yeah, well, I never actually played it this far. You, this is the same thing. I think, think pads are great, but I've never actually owned one. And, you, whatever. We did get results for a Dell Latitude CPI A300ST, running at 300 megahertz. From someone who did actually used to own a ThinkPad 600, it seems to be a machine from slightly later, if only going by the fact that it has a touchpad, it's likely a 1999 laptop onwards. In any case, thanks Sideways for providing those, and I do think we'll be able to make much the same point with these results as we would have been able to make with ThinkPad ones. Obviously, we have an issue as I don't have a 300 megahertz system due to been sent this 333, but I do have a 266 megahertz one, so we'll just test that too and try to figure out if things are in line where we think they should be. And to be honest, it's going to be worth it because these use different versions of the mobile Pentium 2, the 266 model being the older Tonga and the 333 being a Dixon. Also, sideways is Dell appears to be a Dixon. You can tell this because the Dixon has only half of the level 2 cache, with only 256k instead of the 512. But that 256k runs at full speed instead of the half speed that the older Tonga chips used. Both models have 32k of level 1 cache, and as that is internal to the CPU rather than been on the MMC1 module, I would imagine that's full speed in any case. It will likely just run at the internal data path speed of the CPU, whatever that may be. Something tells me my Satellite Pro is about to get its ass handed to it, but again, I'd be pretty disappointed if it didn't. It really should. So to start with, we get 216 in 3D bench, 90 in PC player, 251 in top bench, 78 frames a second in Doom, and 72 in Quake. I'm fairly certain there's some decimal points I'm missing here, but to be honest, I don't really think that matters at these kinds of speeds. 
And needless to say, the 333 megahertz system leads over the 266 and their poor old 90 megahertz Pentium 1 in the satellite. But now we'll move onwards to SpeedSys. With what we already have, things look about how we'd expect, and they reflect the previous set of results, with the 333 MHz system being faster than the others. But things do change a little if we introduce Sideways' Dell into the tests. CPU speed definitely looks as you'd expect, with the 300 MHz latitude sitting right in the middle between the 266 and 333. This does also indicate the CPU core itself probably wasn't changed between the Tonga and Dixon. It does turn out that that Dell can really shift when it comes to memory throughput, which may be due to it being a later design. Now it's a shame I couldn't use the ThinkPad results I found on the internet, because it failed to break 300 megs per second here, but I can't confirm the conditions that those tests were performed under. I couldn't contact the owner to ask about that, or even regarding permission to use said results. And at the time of recording, his website has vanished. And, you know, I should have just saved them and used them, shouldn't I? Because obviously he doesn't give a fuck about them. My CNT is certainly faster than the Dell's Neo Magic as far as video memory goes, though. But things get real close again with level 1 cache going right down the middle of where the two compact machines sit. Level 2 is less clear due to the older Tonga chip being slower. But to be honest, I would say that if all of these machines ran a CPU at the same clock, there would only be very marginal numbers in this. And memory throughput varies very little on all three of them. ThinkPad or not, things are probably still very much as we'd expect them to be then, where most of the numbers are going to trade places by some small, arbitrary amount from one system to another. And to be honest, it really doesn't matter, or it doesn't matter very much. Although I am indeed disappointed by how obscure ThinkPad 600 results have turned out to be, to say everyone is meant to love that line of systems. Oh yes, it's super awesome and bloody popular. And nonetheless, it really doesn't matter which of these you're stuck with, that being the Compaq, the IBM, or the Dell, because in any case you could be doing a hell of a lot worse. Yes, so throughout this I have probably made several slights at the expense of the, the stink pad. Uh, you know, probably other things as well. Now I'm going to defend it. Because here's the thing, right? None of this really matters. None of the numbers we just looked at make an, an ounce of difference. The, it, it doesn't matter. Forget about that. Because there's a worse problem at hand here. And it, here's the thing, right? If you look at modern laptops, I, I've had two Elite Books. I had the 8540, which I really liked, and I've got this 8760, which I fucking hate. And when you look at the 8540, you can actually see that there's... It probably is a descendant of this Armada, or at least laptops from that time period, and probably that design team. I mean, HP did buy Compaq in the end, right? I mean, my Presario 2100, the second one of those I had, had HP branding on the underside, so, you know, it just, the people probably went over there. And here's the thing, the 8760, you can't see it so much. And it's, I've said this before, that, that this industry now, everything's designed by people who don't use these things. And that, that is a problem, and it's actually really evident, because when you actually trace back where a lot of it comes from, the, the shit that's gone wrong, the disregarding like 30 yards of arriving at a point and just throwing it all in the bin and thinking you know better, most of it goes back to Apple, and I'm not necessarily blaming Apple for this, I'm actually blaming the people who designed the other shit and just try to copy it, because it doesn't make sense. Like, in my head, it's utterly baffling, and this is why I'm going to defend the stink pad, because if you actually look at the fucking market share, Lenovo, who, they make stink pads now, IBM sold that division to Lenovo, and a good fucking riddance, but, like, Lenovo have quite a share of the laptop market. Apple is like, what, 10%? They're fucking nobody. Why the hell are you going to copy off them? It, it, it's obviously not the, the more marketable product. It obviously doesn't sell anywhere now as well. If you're going to copy somebody, copy fucking Lenovo, because they seem to be able to sell more units. They're obviously doing it fucking better. Copy off them. You'd copy off Dell even. I don't even like Dell, but they've got a decent market share. Copy those. Don't copy this fucking nobody who's got no part of the market. It's just this tiny little segment the hell is this all? It's stupid. Like, when this Armada was made, 
laptops were still developing a little bit. We, we'd gotten through the 80s, we were well into the 90s. They were starting to shrink, you know, they, they were... Things had sort of started ironing themselves out. Maybe they'd got rid of a couple of features I'd like to keep, but not such a big deal. They, they were still usable, the design still made sense. And it, it's gone horribly wrong. We've just gone so horribly fucking wrong. It 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 does it doesn't baffle me because, like I say, I'm fairly certain the people who design these things now don't use them, so they're just I, I don't know. I guess they're taken in by the the flashy fashion statements that come out of bloody Apple. I, that's all I can think. It's not even just limited to hardware; it's in software as well. You look at operating systems; you can see it. I mean. Windows 11, I've seen like screenshots of that is apparently leaked. I don't know if they're, they're real or not, but if you look at the bottom of the bloody screen, it sure looks like Mac OS. I, I don't understand why you would do that. Like, as Microsoft, you, you have the majority of the market share in desktop operating systems. Why the fuck are you copying off another operating system that has practically no market share of any worth? Like, it makes no sense. Why don't copy yourselves, you know? That, that that would make more sense. You obviously had the more successful product line and you're just throwing it in a bin. It's stupid. Uh, I, I don't know, man, but it's not good. And it's end endlessly annoying. It, it You can't buy a decent thing. You know, I said I hate that 8760. I can't stand the fucking thing. It's built like garbage. It barely works. It's slower than it fucking should be. And I've never been able to find out why. Why do I still have it? I could probably afford a new laptop. I, I could sell some stuff. Or I, I could buy a cheap ship one even. But I can't find anything that's not worse. Like it's got worse since then. So I'm stuck with it. I'm just going to run the thing until it completely packs up because I can't find anything that isn't worse. It's an absolute fucking jerk. I'm glad I didn't stay working in this industry. I am glad that I, when the place I worked shut down, I'm glad that I didn't try and get another job in this fucking industry because I, I would just fucking kill myself. <laughs> well, not really, but I, I'd quit the job. <laughs> that would be screwed. I mean, I recently had to change, like, the, the hard disk server on my web server. And in years gone by, you would have just started Ghost, you'd have Ghosted the disks to a new disk, and the program would have done pretty much everything for you. The tools now, they can't do things like resize partitions, they just bitch at you. Oh, your disk... I thought the disks were two meg smaller. They were two meg fucking larger, and it's still, oh, I can't do this, because the disks are different. So, it's like they don't make the disks I used anymore, I have to change to these ones. Uh, dynamic, I don't know what those are. Oh, you want to play around with the boot entries, you've got to do it on a command line. It's like, what the fuck do I have to do this in a command line? I didn't realise we're in the 1980s, but that seems to be the way with modern computers. Everything's back on a fucking command line. Probably because people want to copy fucking Unix-like operating systems, where you still have to use command lines to do shit like that. And the, am I probably making slights at people who use Linux and shit? Not necessarily, but I'm making slights at operating systems like Linux and fucking Mac OS because I think they're fucking garbage. They're not fit as a general purpose operating system for most fucking people. And it's annoying when you're a technician because it's, oh, now I've got to spend longer doing this. What would have been a 20 minute fucking job about 20 years ago. No, 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 no. Now, now you've got to put like a week into that. It took me nearly a week to do what would have been a 20 minute fucking job. And even then I had to make compromises. I ain't got no mirroring on those disks now. It doesn't work. I can't do it. The tools don't like it. Now it's software mirroring because the tools don't like working with hardware red. It's, it's fucking broken. It's bullshit. I'm so glad I left this industry. Anyways, I guess I'll go back to the microphone dude so he can finish off and then I'll come back and hopefully I'll calm down a little bit. I'm going to go and break something while he does that. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh... Let's get back to him before something horrible happens. I mean, this was all well and good, but obviously Lenovo started going down the same path in the end and just started making things a bit rubbish. But hey, you know, as always, I will always stress that regardless of what my personal opinion is, if you find one of these things works better for you, if you like the ThinkPad 600 better or you like the Dell Latitude better and they work better for you, 
then they are totally the best tool for the job in your, your situation. And that is what you should use. But whatever. Let's give the internal microphone in this thing a quick test before we close the video out. Yeah, that's what the little hole's for in front of the screen. Well, if you can hear this, then it would appear the microphone works. I can only imagine it'll sound about how you'd expect it to for a little laptop microphone of the time. Probably not terrible, but certainly not the best. I mean, it's a very small thing. Uh, I, still, I could see it being used to keep notes in a business setting. It's uh, certainly something I've seen done, and, and in doctor's surgeries as well. Oh, and while we're talking about something now, the screen, I forgot to mention there is a 13-inch option available for the screen, or there was, it's not like they make this thing anymore. I'm unclear as to whether it offered any more resolution, and I've never seen one, so we're on the 12-inch the version, but, well, that's usually good enough. I've certainly never had any complaints. And so, switching back to our regular modern microphone, that should sound considerably better, given it's a standalone microphone. Uh, yeah, I guess we'd better conclude uh, on this laptop. Well, I still like it. I'm glad I've got another one, actually, and I, I thought I wouldn't have a use for it, but I can totally see myself using this, especially if that battery works or can be repacked to work. I was just a bit nervous about lithium ions. Uh, if it was NICAD, I'd be straight on it. Does a laptop work in the sense that it was designed to? Yeah, to be honest, I actually really like this form factor, and I wonder where it had gone. You know, we don't really see laptops like this now. I mean, small laptops now tend to be woefully underpowered, and to be honest, my 20 gigabyte hard drive isn't that far off of the little soldered SSDs you get in some present day ones. Whereas this thing manages to be small and pack quite a punch. Obviously, if they really wanted it to be more portable, they'd have put a fucking handle on it, but I guess you can't have everything, and it does so many other things right that just this once, I might be willing to overlook it. And as we did establish before, I think the same can probably be said for its competing models from other manufacturers, at least for the most part. Because <laughs> it's probably a damn sight better than anything you're going to get now, isn't it? To that end, though, well, <laughs> I'll send you back to that dipshit who stands around in front of the camera. Because I think I've really said all there is to say now. You know, I kind of don't want you to think I'm making another innuendo here, but this one sure turned out to be quite long, didn't it? Yeah, so there you go, that's uh, my Armada 3500. It's a laptop I did used to earn, which were my Zenith 286 and my Presario 2100, which is broken, long dead, I'm probably never going to fix it. Uh, I did like it, but I don't have a use for it, but the Armada 3500 I do, I mean it's kind of like my satellite pro, but faster, so... <laughs> You know, I did own it, but not for long. Like, I, I never figured out what happened to it. As you've seen, I've still got pieces that I took off, like, when I was upgrading it. And I don't know where it went. I didn't... If I had to guess, I think it probably vanished about the time I moved out of the children's home. So somebody probably just stole it. Uh, I don't know, but... I got another one. I got a faster one now, and I got it for ten fucking dollars. <laughs> I guess I can't complain, right? It's, it's worked out all right in the end. I, I mean, you know, I, I bought the Presario twenty one hundred back then, so you know, I wasn't. It was my original one of these Armadas was gone. I I, I got a better laptop then, so you know, it, uh, who knows? I don't suppose it matters. And. As I've said before, I'm sure I've bashed on uh, on ThinkPads and stuff throughout this, but as always, just because I like something does or like dislike something or or whichever, it doesn't mean I'm going to tell you not to use something if you prefer it. And if you find that ThinkPads work better for you, then that is the best tool for the job, and you should totally use a ThinkPad. For me, though, I can't stand the fucking mouse on them. I, I've, I know I'll have said this, but I, I cannot stand the way the pointing device works. It doesn't feel right on my fingers, the way the buttons are. It, if I turn my hand around so the back end of it is against the screen, then the buttons feel right. So I think if they flip them over, I probably wouldn't mind it so much. But they, they don't... They don't work with your, your thumb and fingers. To me, it just... It seems wrong. I, I don't really like it, and I... I've always found that they're not really as well constructed as people make out. They're... But again, like I say, if they work really well for you, then it's totally the best tool for the job in that case, and that's totally what you should use. For me, I prefer the Armada. I think it's a, a better design for me. It, 
it, it does, you know, physically I get along better with it. I, it doesn't hurt my hands, so it's just a shame it doesn't have a handle on it, but it is at least small, so it's, it's not very hard to move around. I'm not really sure what we're going to do next time. I have no fucking idea. Uh, I have some thoughts as always, so I guess maybe we'll get there eventually. I can't see my Cyrix FPU video ever happening. I, I just... I can't get consistent enough results because I had to use different boards, so I think we'll just give up on that idea. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. We'll come up with something. But, uh, in the meantime, well, I guess that's it for this one, so... <laughs> I'm my treason, thanks for watching, and until next time, as always remember, don't be a screw up, load DOS 622 up. Uh, man, what, what a mess. I, I don't know how we arrived at where we are today. It's just a fucking write off.